was. But this young woman's family learned Guam may be a beautiful place to visit if you want to get away with murder. It really tore my insides apart. There are several dozens of unsolved murders. Inside Edition investigates the dark side of an American paradise. <laughs> Rush hour in L.A. is always chaotic, but when a flash flood hit, the chaos was transformed into a life or death struggle. On the way down, I prepared myself for death. But his life and others were saved by the heroic acts of people like Lawrence Welk's grandson coming to the rescue. Script is in. Audio chat, one, two, then to L.A. It may be the most dangerous sport at the Winter Games. Lugin. Tiny sleds slide along tracks of ice at speeds upwards of 70 miles per hour. But our daredevil reporter knows no fear. You're getting ready to find out first hand. Let's go. Slip sliding away on the luge. Stand by. Hello, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thank you for watching Inside Edition. We have a dramatic broadcast for you today. A little later on, you will meet the heroes of Southern California's flash floods. And also ahead, do you luge? You won't believe what our reporter went through. But first up today, an Inside Edition investigation. Why are there so many unsolved murders on the tiny tropical island of Guam? 35 in the last dozen years. What is going on out there? After we heard that a young woman left her family in California, went to Guam, and was brutally killed, we sent John Scott to investigate. Here's his report. It is America's most far-flung possession, and possibly its most exotic a tiny tropical island in the South Pacific. Guam is closer to Moscow than Washington, D.C. They like to brag here that this is where America's day begins because they're closest to the international dateline. But Guam is also where life came to an end for an American girl named Karen Disher in a case that remains unsolved. An island of tantalizing beauty People shouldn't go over there believing that this is somewhere that they can live carefree because it's not that way. It's not that way at all. The exotic setting for a young woman's dream and her family's torment. To me, it looked like something was wrong. Maybe it's a cover-up. Who killed her daughter? I think this was, was blocked from the very beginning. A lot of sloppy police were here. Is there a dark side to paradise? There are several dozens of unsolved murders over the last decade. Guam is a United States territory, seven hours by air southwest of Hawaii. With American government and Japanese investment, Guam's economy is booming. That's why Karen Disher, a tall, striking blonde, first came to the island to make money. And though you might not condone her decision, you cannot help but feel her mother's pain. It, it really tore my insides apart. Mainly because I saw that people I trusted, like your government official and the police department, weren't concerned at all about something like this happening to a human being. It's wrong. They shouldn't have done it. She would have never hurt anybody. She just wanted to be left alone to do what she wanted to do. What Karen did when she first came to Guam was dance in clubs like Andes, where an American girl can make a small fortune entertaining Japanese tourists. That's where uh, we make our most money. Like, per customer, we'd make more money on a Japanese customer than we would a local. They don't have clubs like this in Japan, so it's basically a novelty. They come over here, um, they have a good time, they tip well. They pay your way here and back, give you a free, beautiful apartment to stay in. And you can make anywhere from $10 to $500 a night. The money lured Karen here, but then she gave up dancing. She was attending university classes, planning to earn a court stenographer's degree and return home. She was three months away from her goal when she disappeared. The first real sign that something was wrong with Karen came when her truck was found abandoned. Anyone who knew her knew that this truck was her pride and joy, not something she would just dump by the side of the road. 
That was May 24th. Police simply impounded the truck as a stolen vehicle. The next day, friends filed a missing person report. When they checked her apartment, they found her dog, just a puppy then, caged and weak, without food or water, but no sign of Karen. I assumed she was just, she'd gotten hurt and ended up losing her glasses and ended up getting lost. Karen's mother and sister complained that no one in the Guam Police Department seemed much concerned about Karen's disappearance. The Guam Police Department met us at the airport, and on the way to the police station, they said that my sister was probably dead. They told us that my sister was possible shark bait, that there was a 90% chance that we would never find her or her body or know what happened to her. They were interrogated instead of being treated as grieved relatives of a, a girl who had been murdered on the island, uh, they were almost treated uh, as, as suspects. Ron Tangy, a longtime reporter and television host on Guam, says relations between police and Karen's family were bad yeah, from the beginning really and only got worse. Part of it, because she came from off-island, she was here, from what we could tell, for a short period of time. She was an evening dancer, if you will, a stripper. And um, uh, the, the, the motivation just seemed low to go after. So Karen's sister pressed the investigation. She printed flyers, organized searches, took the mystery of her missing sister to the media. She broke her leg a couple times, so we're thinking maybe she fell off in there somewhere and she just can't walk or, or get to us, and we, we need to get to her. An anonymous caller ended the search. Two and a half weeks after Karen disappeared, her badly decomposed body was found along a dirt road. Wearing only her underwear, she'd been shot in the back of the head. For Karen's family, a case of worst fears confirmed. But they continued to press the police for answers, and police didn't like it. A quote from police chief Adolf Scambaluri. I don't appreciate anyone coming in on a white horse and expecting this island to get down on their knees because something happened to their family. At one point, he threatened to have Lisa arrested for obstruction of justice. You know, we came here with one intention, to find Karen and take her home. And they made our life a living hell, and they left her to rot like a dog. And as far as I'm concerned, I didn't do enough to get underneath her skin. Because if it was her, she'd have dug this island up with a spoon. If it was me missing. By mid-June, the police chief was publicly saying that Karen had been murdered because she owed $50,000 to a drug lord. By July, he was telling the island she was a pornographic movie star. There is a film inside Jennifer Wells. It wasn't true. Karen had danced under the name Jennifer Wells, and there was a porn movie star using that name, but they're not the same person. Well, I think the Karen Disher case was blotched from the very beginning by the police department here. Jim Miles is a former chief of the Guam Police Department. In this case, the thing that kind of irritated me was uh, to attack the, uh, the victim, the credibility of the victim, and cast dispersions which just weren't true. The police response? Uh, basically, the information came in and it was verified, and uh, it turned out that uh, we're talking about two different people here. But not until after it had been released to the papers. Well, uh, if the chief uh, was quoted as making that statement, uh, uh, he would more or less have to uh, justify uh, his rationale for making that particular information public at that point in time. We had asked to meet with the chief, and he won't meet with us. Why? Well, uh, that's news to me. I, I, I didn't know that uh, the chief had turned, uh, turned you down. And at about the same time Chief Scambaluri was calling Karen a porn star, he also was saying an arrest was imminent in her murder. It didn't happen. When that's coming from the top man in the department, it doesn't make the department look good. At, at this uh, you know, uh, present time, uh, it is out of our hands. Uh, the investigative legwork has more or less been completed uh, relative to this particular case. That's not true. Francis Tidingco Gatewood is chief prosecutor in the Guam Attorney General's office. The word from the police department is that this case is basically closed. They have done their work and they have simply handed it over to your office and are waiting for you to take it to the grand jury. Their investigation may be complete as, as far as what they've done so far, but as far as we need to get it through the grand jury and to get an indictment and then eventually to trial, the investigation is incomplete. Last summer, Lisa Rodriguez scoured this island in a desperate search for her sister. But there's one place she'd never seen, 
the spot where Karen's body lay those two and a half weeks, the last place in this paradise where Karen had ever been. As we arrived there, she began to cry, and the skies cried along with her. Why did you want to come here? I want to know everything there is to know about her death. I it all for myself. I can't believe anything they said, so... I'm for myself. Now, finally, the FBI has gotten involved, and we will let you know if they crack the case. Plenty more to come as Inside Edition continues. Lujing, the Olympics' most dangerous sport, will give you a close-up look. And next, a dramatic rescue on a California highway. The guy simply just ran out of strength, uh, let go of the skid, and fell underwater, was gone, had vanished. Whoa, he fell! Off. He fell. Coming up on Newsbeat, charges a high school football coach sells cocaine. That's the scenario prosecutors paint as a coach is arraigned for dealing drugs in two counties. We'll have the story. And it can be one of the most difficult days of the year for kids. How can you keep your child from getting the Valentine's Day blues? We'll explain. And the glory days when Josephine Baker was the rage of Paris are still alive for a Philadelphia woman. The last surviving member of the troupe, her story's at the heart of the matter. I'm Bruce Hamilton. Join us for Newsbeat at 6. Toyota dealers are cutting deals like never before. With savings in their biggest Toyota selection ever, they're going on a tear to bring you hot deals on Tercel, the lowest priced two-door sedan in America. Save now on Corolla, up to $1,100 in option package savings. Cut a great deal for yourself now. When I lie, for President's Week, they're really chopping prices. But hurry, before all these great deals are cut. That's what I've been saying all along. <laughs> little hearts, even broken hearts. But there's one heart that's most important, your heart. So when you have problems with your heart, call Einstein's Heart Center, 1-800-EINSTEIN. Have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with an Einstein nurse. She can find you a doctor or answer your questions. Call 1-800-EINSTEIN. Because there are a lot of hearts out there, but you only have one of them. Come on and neutralize your body. Come on and neutralize your mind. What you got to do is make a phone call. 1 800 321 Nutricize your life. Nutricize now and lose all the weight you can at Nutrisystem for only $89. Call 1 800 321 thin for years, we've heard that California is in the middle of a drought, but now it is raining hard, and that is causing flash floods. Motorists are in danger. Nancy Glass is here to tell us about some dramatic rescues. Nancy. Bill, the rains began on Sunday, and they continued through today. Flood warnings were issued, but it was too late for people already stranded on Los Angeles highways. As the water rose above the tops of their cars, many thought they would not survive. Luckily, help was on its way. This was the scene in the San Fernando Valley yesterday, as a powerful Pacific storm triggered mudslides and the worst flooding in 50 years. And with the disaster came selfless heroism and dramatic rescues, as scores of drivers clung to the roofs of cars in the rising waters. This man's car was already submerged when he was plucked out of the floodwaters by a rescue helicopter. But as he hung 80 feet above the water and with safety within arm's reach... Where is this guy? Michael Ross was found moments later in the rising waters and hoisted up again, this time to safety. On the way down, I prepared myself for death, yeah. My life did not flash before my eyes, but I was, you know, I'm pretty certain that at the very, very best, you know, I'd be a cripple for life or something. And I was pretty sure I was going to die, yeah, I mean, this is it. 
News cameraman Larry Welk, grandson of TV legend Lawrence Welk, was in a news helicopter shooting rescues when he spotted a stranded driver in serious trouble. When we saw him, he, uh, he was actually underwater and his arm was up in the air and he was flailing and uh, he'd come up for air and then he'd go back down again. The guy grabbed on to the left skid uh, and, and I was reaching down to try and grab him. I couldn't, I had the camera on my lap and I couldn't grab him. The guy simply just ran out of strength, uh, let go of the skid and fell underwater and uh, was underwater, was gone. Our reporter uh, was, was screaming, get in the water and save that guy. He jumped into the water, leaving his camera behind, but still rolling. It was so lucky we grabbed him, pulled him up out of the water, um, gave him the tire diver swim. I put my arm around him. I was trying to squeeze the, some water out of his throat. Water was, was coming out. He was coming in and out of consciousness. I was paddling over with, with this guy to what appeared to me to be the top of a tree or, or a little island of weeds or something. Um, and, uh, and I couldn't have handled it much longer. This guy was really starting to come to. He was starting to hit me and stuff, and we were tangled up in all these weeds. Welk helped the stranded man stay above water until rescuers and dinghies plucked him to safety. Life dealt me a hand, and I, and I, I think I rose to the occasion. And, um, and thanks to uh, some teamwork in the helicopter, um, I, I feel really good. And uh, I don't feel like a hero, but I, I feel like I did, I did what needed to be done. What a courageous man. Four deaths have already been attributed to the storm. The Weather Service says there's no rainbow on the horizon. The rain is expected to continue, and a third major storm is predicted for the weekend, Bill. Thanks, Nancy. Quite some footage. And just ahead, have you ever tried luging? Well, you will. Next. So can I give this a shot? <sighs> Travel arranged through Continental, taking off this winter to 11 sun and fun-filled Florida cities. Continental to Florida. One airline can make a difference. This Friday, meet the baby who saved the life of this girl, her big sister. Buying a medical alert system preys on your worst fears. But what if you fall and hurt yourself? And promises peace of mind. You push the button, we get you help. But you could be in for more than you bargained for. It could cost you thousands, even if you die. And how long does it really take them to respond? Before you sign up, watch as Walt Hunter investigates call for help on The Issue Tonight. Issues and information you won't find anywhere else. The Issue Tonight, Thursday at 11 on The News Tonight. This week, every week, more super hot prices at Acme. Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice, 64 ounce carton, two fifty nine. All liquid laundry detergent, 64 ounce size, two sixty nine. You get more at Acme. Your neighborhood store. Oh, it's sore, tender from having to blow it so often. They need Puffs Plus, the first tissue that's first aid for a sore nose. Something soothing in there. Yeah, lotion. It was just the right amount. Puffs Plus is the only tissue with moisturizing lotion with aloe, so it's less irritating to a sore nose than any other tissue. My nose feels great. It is so soothing. Puffs Plus with aloe. It's got the lotion it takes to be better. My nose feels better. Yes, it does. See Sunday's paper for the Wheel of Fortune Watch and Win game. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Seven reasons people want a Nissan Sentra. Mm. Strict family tradition to own one of the ten best cars. Only affordable sedan that fits five and doesn't feel like the subway. Couldn't resist $500 savings on cruise, air, and stereo cassette package. Mm. Nissan Sentra E retains more of its value than Corolla. It's priced over a thousand less than Civic. Has this really neat cup holder. And the number one reason... <laughs> President's Day savings will make this an even better time to buy. Let me get right to the point. Easy 101 now sounds more lively and upbeat. Lively as in Phil Collins, Billy Joel, Mariah Carey, Gloria Estefan, Michael Bolton, all the good tunes. The lively new Easy 101. Hey, this isn't just a new word for easy. It's a more upbeat, more alive sound than you might have thought Easy 101 had. Listen and you decide. The lively new Easy 101. Come on, give us a try. Acme leads the way every day with super hot prices. Nabisco Snack Crackers, 7 to 10 ounce package, $1.59. Progresso Soups, 19 ounce can, $1.09. You get more at Acme. Your neighborhood store. 
Many of us are closely watching the Olympics, and one of the most unusual and dangerous events is luging. It looks like a lot of fun, but as our daredevil reporter Rick Kirkham found out firsthand, it's a scary ride. without a doubt the most dangerous of the Winter Olympic events. Luging, a sport in which the athlete lies flat on his or her back, flying faster than a speeding bullet down an ice-covered track. The sleds are ready and the track is fast at Hammerstrand. Though luging has been a popular pastime sport in Europe since the 1800s, it has been an Olympic event only since 1964. And few people know that the Olympic Committee almost banned the event in that year when a loser was killed during a trial run. There is a, a great potential to be hurt. Jody Hayes is a Canadian loser ranked 17th in her country. She learned the sport here at the Olympic Park in Calgary, site of the 88 Winter Olympics. I think the appeal of, of luge uh, rather than bobsled is that it's you and only you that's in control of the sled. There are only two of these tracks on the North American continent. So, athletes come from all over to practice their skills. But if you're the daredevil type, without any experience at all, you too can take on what losers believe is the ultimate challenge. Yep, they have uh, tourist rides open to the public here, and it's very cheap, it's $10 a run, and you have instruction in a sled, and you go. So can I give this a shot? Sure, we'll get you suited up and let's go. Do I get lots of pads and stuff? No, you don't need lots of pads. Oh, great. You hear that, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I was off to be fitted into the latest in professional luging attire. Okay, here he comes. Don't laugh. This Spider-Man looking outfit really is a prototype for future Olympians. I look like something that got sick on myself. <laughs> anyway, it was time to learn the basics of luging, which as Jody pointed out, begins ball. with studying the curves on the track. Before every run, a loser goes through um, imagery. Um, they go through the whole track in their mind. You don't really have any time to think about it when you're going down. Uh, you have to know three three curves before you steer, you know, what you're going to do. Uh, so it's almost like an instinct. My instinct was to call it quits and fly home, but Jody insisted there was no turning back now. Okay, so just how hard is it for those Olympians? Well, you're getting ready to find out firsthand. Let's go. Realizing your life depends on how well you can steer with your feet is not a comforting factor, and my feet abandoned me before I even made the second curve. <laughs> sending me walking back up to the start while my sled cruised alone to the finish line. <laughs> well, I made it about 15 yards before I flipped it. My confidence gaining, I prepared for a second run. Seeing my first aborted attempt, Canadian lose director Wally Roth gave me some last-minute tips on how to make it further than just the first turn. Your head came up and your shoulders were rolled up, right. which again made it more unstable. Ah, uh, okay. As opposed to lying flat back. So I'm better off than just close my eyes, sit back, and hold on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try that one this time. <laughs> The hardest part of losing is lying on the sled itself. It's only three feet long, so your stomach muscles must hold your legs extended while your lower back muscles hold your shoulders and head up. How fast can a person get going down this thing? And the track in Calgary, I guess top speed would be about uh, 117 kilometers an hour. Uh, there's tracks in the world that stop at over 130 kilometers an hour, 80-something 80, 80 miles an hour. That's a very dangerous speed. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to it, but once you're used to it, you just can't get enough. Personally, at 40 miles per hour, I was getting more than I wanted. Each time I thought I was on the last curve, yet another menacing turn would appear. The final curve, at last. But destiny was not going to allow me to finish. The sled wanted to go one direction, while I went the other. But after some eight trips down what I called the mountain of death, I finally made it to the finish line. An expertly maneuvered smooth ending, as you can see. I have a newfound respect for Olympic contestants. This is not easy stuff. Give me a critique. How well did I do as an amateur? An amateur, you did great. I mean, the G-force is something you've probably never experienced something like that before. And no, not quite. And <laughs> being up on a wall, you know, so... We'll start again tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> am I ready for the Olympics after that? Uh, a few more years. <laughs> All right. Eight, eight years. You'll be so. my coach, though. You bet. 
So, we'll bring you part two of this inside adventure from the 2002 Olympics. But then, I wouldn't hold your breath. That looks like so much fun, doesn't it? And the scariest part of Rick's ride may have been his suit. Next Olympics, we'll send him over the ski jump. And Inside Edition, we'll be right back. Now, back pain doesn't have to ruin another night's sleep. Introducing new Dones PM. Dones starts with a unique pain reliever these brands don't have, then adds a second ingredient to help you sleep. New Dones PM for nighttime back pain. Carol, you bake this cheesecake. Mm -mm. I want the recipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'll wait till they come up with a nice, easy mix. All right, a mix with real cherries? Come on. Jello cheesecake, now with real fruit topping. You know, I hear Jello makes a good cheesecake. You've just poured yourself a bowl of Kellogg's Crispix when... Hello? Oh, Mom, Mom, what a surprise. Oh, well, actually, my cereal's sitting in milk. When will you get back to your Kellogg's Crispix? It's anybody's guess. Uh-huh. But they wouldn't give your money back? Fortunately, Kellogg's Crispix stays crisp and delicious well, in milk. I'm sure Aunt Helen didn't mean it that way. Even if you can't get to it right away. Uh-huh. Mm, still crispy. You're absolutely right, Mom. Kellogg's Crispix. The taste that waits for you. This Valentine's Day, find out why falling in love can sometimes be deadly. Richard Gere, Kim Basinger, Final Analysis, Rated R, now playing. During President's Week, your Dodge dealer dares you to compare. Dodge Dakota 4x4 Club Cab with an available new Magnum V8. Out holes, out toes, just plain out works any comparable Ford, Chevy, or import compact. Now, Dakota, just voted four-wheeler magazine's pickup of the year, has 750 cash back. So make it your choice during the Dodge President's Week Dare to Compare Challenge. Dare, dare, dare to compare. <laughs> your hands on protecting our future. We owe it to our children. Call us. And here's what's upcoming on Inside Edition. What does a man have to do to live in a gorgeous place like this? It's easy. Just commit a murder. This is punishment. <laughs> <laughs> After he brutally stabbed his girlfriend to death, the judge banished him to paradise. Now, he has a new family, new friends, and a life anyone would kill for. And guess what he did when authorities said he could go home? That's tomorrow, we'll find out. And that's it for us today. Thanks again for watching Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. See you tomorrow.